The forest, a mysterious wilderness of sumptuous beauty. Germany, forests are open to everyone for recreation. All forests, whether a state, municipal, or privately owned forest. Many people use the forests to relax, to exercise, or just to experience nature. Nonetheless, the forest is also a workplace, a place to be cared for where timber is harvested and replanted. Thomas Peters is a ranger for the state-owned Brandenburg Forest. As a forester, he pays attention to responsible forest management and sustainability. In other words, preserving biological diversity and cutting down only as many trees during the timber harvest as the forest can regenerate. Everyone's talking about sustainability. Foresters invented it hundreds of years ago. Sustainability is crucial because our generation lives from the work of our predecessors and we have to leave the same for our descendants to ensure continuity. Sustainable and ecological forestry combines timber production with nature conservation and climate protection. A healthy forest can provide many services at once. It's the habitat of plants and animals. It filters and stores drinking water. It has a balancing effect on the climate, purifies the air and provides timber. One third of Germany is covered by forests. This area has increased consistently over the past 40 years. If forest land is used for road construction or other purposes, a new swath of forest must be planted in another location to make up for it. Forests of pine, beech and oak are typical for the northern German lowlands. These mixed forests form sound ecosystems and that's why monocultures are reconstituted as mixed forests like the pine forest here. But new trees need space and air. The best pines should continue to grow. They are the parent trees and the protective shield for the next generation. Trees that do not show optimal growth must go. They are marked for felling. This is our tree for the future. It should remain standing until it's about 100 to 120 years old. The objective of thinning is to promote the development of the best trees. That means taking away those trees that obstruct their growth. These are trees of poor quality and low vitality that take too much space away from the good trees up in the canopy. Young trees have already taken root naturally. In a few decades, a mixed forest of pines, beeches and oaks will stand here. Even in commercial forests, Sustainable forestry offers habitats for rare species. Many of them can only live on dead wood or in old trees. For this reason, these are also preserved in managed forests. In commercial forests, an attempt is being made to preserve biological diversity by allowing a specific number of these trees to remain standing. The reason is many rare and protected plant and animal species have specialized in living in such trees. Responsible forest management builds on sustainability. For example, only some of the trees are felled during the timber harvest. This provides more light for the next generation of saplings. Here, a timber harvesting machine limbs the trees and saws them in precisely defined sections. Forests create jobs in rural regions and wood as a renewable resource. Money has to be earned with timber production because care, supervision and natural conservation measures all cost money. For these reasons, forest management needs to at least break even. Demand for timber as a natural resource is high. The wood processing industry utilizes the entire tree trunk. Beams and boards are made from the trunks. Whether for furniture, roof frameworks or entire wooden houses, most of the timber goes to the construction industry. Bernd Ebert from the local sawmill in Barut, Brandenburg, relies on this material. 
Holz ist ein intelligenter Baustoff. Timber is an intelligent building material that is very well suited for structural building purposes due to its low weight and high stability in all sizes from residential roofing to large industrial buildings. There are no alternatives to timber as a resource. It grows and renews itself every day, but in spite of that, this is a limited resource and we need to use it wisely. Timber is so valuable a resource that no waste is generated during the entire production process. Saw remains are collected and a neighboring firm presses them to make fiberboard for the furniture industry. Timber products bind the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere that the tree has taken in over its lifetime. So all timber products from fiber boards to old railway sleepers store carbon. Even old timber that's no longer in use is valuable. Power plants transform it into heat and green electricity. The life cycle of timber products is a carbon saving closed substance cycle. Forests are the earth's lungs. They bind carbon, form oxygen, and filter the air. Yet this means that forests are also exposed to pollution. Automobiles, industry, and agriculture emit nitrogen and other pollutants. This air pollution is deposited in the forest soil and damages the trees. To help solve the problems of forest sustainability, state forest research was established in Germany about 200 years ago. In the Soling forests, the Northwestern German Forest Research Center studies the forest ecosystem. With his colleagues, Professor Hermann Spellmann compiles data on environmental risks, climate change, and forest growth. Environmental monitoring is one of the core tasks of the Forest Research Center. We record changes to forest growth caused by specific factors over longer periods. Climate, deposits from the air, and precipitation, which influences the water balance. The results are very clear. Forests not only need protection from air pollution, the climate is changing. Many forests will change when the summers become hotter and drier, the winters milder, and weather extremes more frequent. Climate change is such a huge challenge that we cannot avoid it. We want to find out what sites are actually suitable for specific tree species and what risks they can expect. In the future, we will have the same tree species, but they will no longer stand on the same sites as today. One solution is to mix the stock, cultivating tree species with different ecological demands at the same site. When one species fails, others can survive these challenges. Mixed beech woods are typical for German low mountain ranges, mixed with oaks in lower locations and with firs and spruces at higher altitudes. As climate change progresses, the composition of trees and forests will change. Species from other regions of the world may become important, for example, the Douglas fir. This tree was imported over 100 years ago from the American Northwest and has developed well under the critical monitoring of forest researchers. The forests in Germany are a diversified mosaic of varying habitats. They are living, dynamic systems, constantly undergoing change. Every forest offers special ecological niches for animals and plants. If we humans stop intervening, entirely unique and natural interdependencies arise among animal and plant species. We can observe these developments in the national parks. Dr. Jörg Miller studies beetles and fungi in the Bavarian Forest National Park. He monitors the development of the natural flora and fauna in the core area of the park. Here, no forestry of any sort has taken place since 1970. This is where nature is allowed to live by its own rules. What's remarkable about the national park compared with commercial forests is that here an entirely natural dynamic is able to happen. The trees are allowed to die naturally. And for example, the spruce bark beetle is allowed to proliferate copiously and even kill an entire forest stand. This is natural dynamics at work. Yet nature needs time for change. By the time a primeval forest has developed here, 
Similar to forests that once stood in Central Europe long ago, another 200 years will pass. Some rare species have such specific demands on their habitats that they can only live in 100% protected zones. For example, a tiny inconspicuous fungus that is specialized in regions with extremely large amounts of deadwood, Antrodiella citronella. The discovery of this Antrodiella citronella was a sensation for us. It was considered as good as extinct and is now very present. And that is exactly what you hope for from a national park, that rare species, small ones on the verge of extinction, are saved, not just the spectacular and large species. The experience of the natural wilderness attracts many visitors. Timid animal species retreat into more remote regions. Naturalist Miller searches for their traces. He wants to find out where exactly these animals live in the national park. He therefore collects and maps everything he finds. This is called monitoring. Here in the national park, we want people to experience nature, but we also want to protect rare animal species, like the wood grouse. And we have to balance these two aspects. We use the scientific data from the monitoring programs for this, like what we're collecting here for the wood grouse. This way, hiking trails allow visitors to experience nature without disturbing shy wild species withdrawn in their natural habitat. National parks offer both nature conservation and the experience of nature like here at a height of 1,300 meters on the Falkenstein mountain, with its characteristic sparse mountain spruce forests. Not far from the national park, at the southern edge of the Bavarian forest, the engineer Oswald Haselbeck owns a parcel of forest land the size of 30 soccer fields. He has an appointment to meet forester Sandra Prent. Hello, Mrs. Prent. Hello, Mr. Haselbeck. Nice to see you. Forest owners can consult with the forestry offices about questions of land management. In this case, a storm has blown down a section of Mr. Haselbeck's forest. Natural impacts are a major challenge for forest owners. In recent years, incidents involving damage have increased, for example from storms, and the demand for advice has grown considerably. Here, the wind knocked over most of the spruce trees. Forester Prent provides advice on renewing the forest. The losses are terrible because we've put in a lot of money and work to get the trees big enough so that we can actually do something with the forest. And now I'm trying to cultivate a mixed forest of spruce and fir and beech to establish a more wind-resistant forest. I'm very interested in developing a stable forest, and of course I also have a responsibility to society, and that's why we need to deal with the forest appropriately and care for it. In a commercial forest, just a few simple steps can foster a greater variety of species. For example, piles of brushwood on the forest edge serve as shelters for hedgehogs and birds. Forest and nature conservation laws protect the forest and its special biotopes. Here we have a wonderful example of a habitat tree. It's a home for animals. A woodpecker has just pecked himself a hole up there. You can see that here really well. And this is the sawdust from its construction site, so to speak. The woodpeckers prepare the way for a whole range of species to follow that then live in the woodpecker's holes. Just as wildlife needs forests, so do humans, who benefit the most from healthy forests. <laughs>